Pastor Steve. Welcome to Victory Harbor. We're so glad you guys are worshiping with us today. Let's lift up the Lord today. He is worthy. Today's sermon nugget is God's provision. Sometime back there was an elderly Christian lady. Now this lady was poor, really a poor lady. And she lived in a rundown house, but she was always praising God. Every morning she'd get up and she'd, Praise God you woke me up today. Praise God, look at the beautiful sunshine if it was raining. Praise God, thank you for the rain. Thank you for the flowers. Praise God. She was always praising God, always lifting Him up. The only problem she had was her next door neighbor. He was a grumpy old man who was an atheist. He didn't believe in God. <clears throat> One day the old elderly lady was praying and he came up saw her through the window and he slipped up and he began to eavesdrop. And she was praying, Lord, you know my needs. Lord, you're my provider. You know, Lord, that I'm out of food. You know, Lord, there's no, nothing here to eat and it's another week before I get paid. Lord, I need your help. I'm trusting you. I believe, God, you are my provider. That grumpy old man said, I've got her now. I've got her now. He ran down to the grocery store and got her some groceries, got her milk, bread, and lunch meat and some other things. Took them and set them on her front porch, rung the doorbell, ran around the side of the house to hide. She come out, she saw all them groceries there. She lifted up her hands and started praising God. God, you're so wonderful. You're my provider, God. I praise you. He come around and said, I've got you now. God didn't get you those groceries. I did. She went, praise God, praise God. My God got me these groceries and he made the devil pay for them. Hallelujah, our God is a provider. No matter what the situation is, He will provide. We'll give, we'll, today's scripture is going to be from Genesis 22, 11 through 14. But I'm going to give you a little bit of pretext. <clears throat> Abraham, at the insistence of Sarah, his wife, has sent Hagar and Ishmael away. He has only one son, Isaac, and Sarah don't want him to share in the inheritance. So now Abraham is sitting here with his only son. And God has told him that the blessings will come through his son Isaac. That his seed will be more than even the sands of the sea. And all the stars, his blessings will come through Isaac. Then the Lord comes to Abraham and he says... Take your son Isaac up on top of the mountain and offer him up as a sacrifice. Abraham's heart is broken. He's terrified. He's sick to death. But he knows to obey God. He gets his son Isaac and they begin to go up towards the mountain. Isaac looks at him and says, Father, I see the fire. Father, I see the wood. But where is the sacrifice? Abraham looked at his son with tears in his eyes. And he said, Son, God will provide the sacrifice. They build the altar. And all of a sudden, Abraham gets his son and lays him down on the altar and gets the knife out. And he's ready to plunge it into his heart. And this is where the text starts. But the angel of the Lord called him from heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. He replied, here am I. Then he said, do not lay a hand to the boy or do anything to him. For now I know that you fear God, since you have not withheld your only son from me. Abraham looked up and saw a ram caught in the thicket by its horns. 
Excuse me. So Abraham went and took the ram and offered it as a burnt offering in the place of his son. And Abraham named that place the Lord will provide. So today it is said it will be provided on the Lord's mountain. The children of Israel are in bondage down in the land of Egypt. They have been in bondage for 400 years. Things are desperate down there. They're treated real bad. But our God is a provider. A little slave girl becomes pregnant. The king has declared that all male children must die. But she saves her son. For three months she shelters him. After three months, she knows she's got to do something. So she gets a basket, coats it with tar, puts the little baby in it, and tells her other daughter to go watch over the baby. The baby's in the stream, and Pharaoh's daughter sees him and runs and brings him in and raises him up in the house of Pharaoh. He grows up to be Moses, that deliverer that delivered the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt. Our God can cause all kinds of miraculous things to provide for you. I'm glad that he provided that leader in Moses to deliver those children of Israel out of bondage. God provides for us too. He has physical provision for us like food, raiment, and shelter. I remember many, many years ago, Dot and I, I was in the Army and we lived in Grafton, Virginia, and I don't mean to get graphic, but we lived in a roach-infested trailer that wasn't fit to live in. But we began to praise God and thank Him even for that. He's always provided for us. Sometimes before the month was over, we ran out of money, and we were in dire need. I had this blue, I never will forget this, J.C. Penney's jacket. It's hanging in the closet, I didn't wear it. But every time we had a need, I could go to that jacket and reach my hand in there, pull out of that pocket and there'd be a $20 bill there. That seemed like a fortune to us. God provided for us. And that happened over and over and over when we had a need. Our God is a provider. When we build, were building our house here, the Lord sent the Mennonites in to put it under a roof. They didn't charge us a penny. Our God is a provider. He will provide for you spiritually at the whipping post. He suffered many, many stripes for your healing. Not only for your body, but for your mind and your spirit. They took him and nailed him to the cross. He provided a sacrifice to put us back in right relationship with God. Because of his sacrifice, we can be in right standing with God. They took him and put him in a tomb and sealed the tomb. But on that third day, that stone was rolled away. The tomb was empty. Because of that, God has provided for us the hope of His return and eternal life. Are you trusting in Him? Is He your Savior? Have you gave your heart to Him? Today is the day of salvation. Let us pray. Lord, we thank You, God, for Your mercy, Your kindness, Your grace. I thank You for that old rugged cross, Lord where you paid the price for my sins. I thank you for that whipping post where you paid the price for my healing. I thank you, Lord, for that empty tomb now that we have hope and faith and know, Lord, that you're coming back for us. We know the grave is not the end. It's only the beginning. I thank you and praise you and ask you, God, if there's any end lost among us, Lord, that you would save them. We ask it in Jesus' name. Remember, God is your provider.